Hello everyone, this is Rohit Verma and uh, this is a small initiative that I am taking to present up the topic of optics for you guys, for my students, so that they stay up to date, staying at home as well uh, with the content that we are going to go through, that is optics. So today we are going to discuss about the topic of optics and discuss a few particular uh, specific uh, subtopics of uh, uh, today's chapter. So without any further delay, let's start it up. Alright, so we're going to talk about first of all refraction of light, which is the part A, the initial part of uh, this particular chapter. That's refraction of light at plane surfaces, when we have the flat surfaces. Uh, so first, let's uh, understand the basics and let's see what exactly does refraction of light means. Refraction of light, as we see here, uh, is defined as the process of bending of a ray of light when it passes from one medium to another, wherein the density of the mediums is different, which means that light actually travels through two different mediums and uh, these mediums are different on the basis of their densities uh, and when this happens then the light actually bends this is exactly what we can see right here as per this diagram shown on the screen that when we place a spoon inside a half glass filled with water and uh, we see from uh, the outside so then the spoon appears to be bent the same thing happens uh, in a swimming pool when uh, we're standing uh, in a swimming pool and half of our body is inside it so the lower portion of our body that is the legs and uh, the lower half of the body seems shorter so this is basically as well like refraction of light and uh, the underlined words as mentioned here are the keywords which are basically the technical words that uh, we're not supposed to leave as per a definition since there's ample of uh, differences between a statement and a definition so this is the definition prescribably so as we've already discussed what exactly is the definition of refraction of light let's understand in what ways it can happen so when a ray of light passes from one medium to another there can be two types of mediums possible one is rarer medium as the name says rare means the density is less and second is denser which means density is more so we've already started about and the basic sciences about three states of matter being solid liquids and gases wherein solids are the maximum dense mediums uh, or the highest density they have and uh, the gases have the least density so they're more rare so if we see as an example mentioned in the bracket air is rare and water or glass can be denser and in comparison to it so uh, if we see in uh, detail then when a ray of light travels from a rarer medium to a denser medium which means like from air to water then the air uh, is actually having lots of spaces between the molecules wherein water has less spaces because the density is high so when the ray of light travels from air to water we've got less space hence in in form of bending the ray of light will actually not scatter away it will bend towards the normal now what exactly is this word normal when a ray strikes to a surface surface like flat surface let's say like a horizontal sleeping line and the ray strikes over it in that case according to the surface we make a perpendicular imaginary line which is called normal in simple words normal means perpendicular so instead of bending away from the normal the ray will bend towards the normal which i'll show further in uh, terms of a diagram as well in the coming slide one of the coming slides so this is what happens uh, so this we can learn as it is that when we go from rarer to denser medium the ray bends towards the normal and when the opposite thing happens the consequences are obviously as well like reversed that the ray uh, uh, bends away from the normal if the ray is traveling from denser to rarer medium now see if we're going from denser to rarer we had less space earlier and now we've got more space in the other medium like in water we've got less spaces between the molecules in air we have ample of space so the ray actually scatters around and that's how only this phenomena happens let's proceed further to our next topic, which is why refraction actually happens what's the reason behind refraction of light or bending of light so let's understand refraction contains what like transferring of a ray of light from one medium to another so in refraction or bending of light actually the phenomenon is happening because a ray of light is changing its medium and its speed also will change because if we have lots of space like in a rarer medium just i explained uh, if we have ample of space for the ray to move then the speed obviously will be high just like as if you're driving a car on a highway and if you're going on a street with heavy traffic wherein the density is high 
packed up lots of vehicles around and we've got less spaces to move around so at that certain place we our speed will obviously reduce the same thing happens even with a ray of light that when it travels in a rarer medium the speed will be high, will be high wherein it will travel in a denser medium the speed will become low because of less spaces of course and this is the major reason why refraction or bending happens the light bends because of change in speed in simple terms similarly due to this phenomena while passing from one medium to another if the light slows down it bends towards the normal because it's slowing down you know it, it's moving towards the normal it can't scatter around it can't uh, you can say scatter away uh, from its ideal position and uh, if the light speeds up it automatically shoot away from the normal you know it will be able to bend away from the normal this is exactly the phenomena which happens and in simple terms as i said earlier the refraction is happening just because the speed of light is changing while traveling from one medium to another all right so let's now talk about uh, that when refraction of light happens that is the light travels from one medium to another what impact it creates on these three parameters like speed well, wavelength and frequency as we've discussed one formula earlier in class 9th we've studied this formula which connects all these three parameters which is v equals f lambda so when a ray of light changes its medium the speed of light will increase in a rarer medium because we have lots of space to move of course the ray uh, of light has ample of space and its speed will reduce down decrease in a denser medium because the space is less comparatively because molecules are close to each other similar impacts are there on wavelength that it also increases in rarer medium whereas it decreases on the denser medium which means we have similar impacts on both speed as well as wavelength however when you talk about frequency that's one parameter or a property which does not change when a light changes its uh, you know medium from one to another because frequency just depends on the source of light from where the light is actually originated through uh, so these are the three impacts and the, the three major parameters of array of light as studied and let's move further. Alright students, so now, uh, now let's talk about the laws of refraction of light and uh, there are two major laws of refraction of light just like uh, reflection of light. The first law says that the incident ray, uh, ref refracted ray and the normal at the point of incidence all lie in the same plane which means that the ray which is coming towards the surface which is called the incident ray as it is incident uh, the refracted ray which is refracted or bent and the normal which is the perpendicular to the surface all these three things at the point of incidence uh, lie at the same plane uh, in the same plane so the second one says that the ratio of sine i upon sine r which is the ratio of sine of angle of incidence which is the angle between the incident ray and the normal and the sine of angle of refraction which is r small r that is the angle uh, between the refracted ray and the normal is constant for a given pair of media for any given pair of uh, two particular media media is the plural of medium over here so that means sin i upon sin r will be termed as a constant and this constant is nothing but mu and let's actually understand what this mu thing is in detail in the further slide up so now let's talk about this mu mu is basically a refractive index and what exactly this is let's understand this refractive index is a property of a medium or a pair of medium which is closely associated with the density of this medium which means that they're actually directly related more dense a medium is higher will be its value of mu that is the refractive index so in simple terms we can say that uh, air will have a less refractive index as compared to water and water will have a less refractive index in comparison to glass and in terms of actual definition refractive index of uh, this is uh, here the symbol is mentioned here with respect to two media uh, that mu of two with respect to one that's how we read it so the second one which is on the right is read first and then the one on the left so we can say that refractive index of the second medium with respect to the first medium is defined as ratio of the sine of angle of incidence in the first medium to the sine of angle of refraction in the second medium and this mu is represented by this greek symbol which is written here in front of our screen screens and is read as mu m e w mu and it's a unitless constant quantity because uh, you know that since it is sine i upon sine r sine i sine r both are angles they will really cancel off the values at degrees and ultimately we'll get a unitless constant value which is a fixed number and the, how it depends upon further uh, properties or parameters it says the refractive index of a medium depends on these three things nature of the medium which is that more dense the medium will be more will it uh, will be its value of refractive index or mu 
second is temperature it is inversely proportional which means more will be the temperature less will be the refractive index since it will create an impact on the density as well and uh, the third is wavelength of light which is again inversely proportional which means more will be the wavelength of light less will be the refractive index that means that if we compare let's say the Vibgyor then R that is red color has the highest wavelength that means that it will have the least value of refractive index wherein for the wallet color which is V uh, the value of wavelength is the least one and the refractive index will be the highest we uh, have uh, this particular value of mu for some common substances which is mentioned in the selena publications book of concise uh, for icsc uh, class 10th uh, that is mentioned on page number 70 i'm just reading out some values for vacuum the value of mu is 1 for air it is 1.0003 approximately 1 itself for water it is 1.33 for diamond it's 2.41 being the highest one in the order so these values must be learned since sometimes they're referred up in certain questions or even in numericals or in general terms so this definitely must be seen uh, students through page number 73 let's proceed all right now some formulas associated or related to mu which are, F are definitely very important because they are often associated with some numericals first formula is mu equals c by v wherein C means the speed of light in vacuum which is 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second as we've studied and V is the speed of light in the given medium which can be anything depending upon the medium. Uh, it is generally given in terms of the question or the mu will be given that means out of these three parameters uh, two will be given one will be asked. Similarly the other formula which we have is mu of second medium with respect to first means that speed of light in medium 2 upon speed of light in medium 1. Uh, then uh, speed of light in medium 1 upon speed of light in medium 2 sorry then uh, similarly this can also be written as mu mu 2 with respect to 1 is equal to actually mu 2 upon mu 1 itself as in uh, what we are able to understand with the reference of this term and another thing mu 2 is to 1 and mu 1 is to 2 they will be reciprocal which means that if i say let's suppose the refractive index of water with respect to air is let's suppose 2 just as an example I said like refractive index of water with respect to air is let's say 2 that means the refractive index of air with respect to water will turn out to be 1 by 2 so they are reciprocal so you got it what I mean as in like the uh, mediums if they are interchanged through the values will turn out to be reciprocals of each other so let, these are some of the formulas which we must know and we are going to implement them up in uh, the numericals. All right so let's understand uh, the conditions uh, in which the ray of light in refraction passes undeviated and there's no really bending I mean the light really doesn't bend so there are two such conditions the first one is when the angle of incidence is zero which means that the ray is actually coming perpendicular to the surface right at 90 degree to the surface wherein the angle of incidence which is the angle between the incident ray and the normal will actually be zero that means the incident ray is coming right onto the normal in this condition the ray passes undeviated there is absolutely no bending and the second criteria is that when the refractive index of both the mediums is same so we've got two mediums through which the ray is passing if we assume let's say that both the mediums are same with same refractive index and uh, the same amount of densities let's say it's going from air to air with same densities there will obviously be no bending because if the densities are not really changing then uh, technically it's just one single medium and there won't be any bending happening so these are the two conditions which we must let's understand the refraction of light through a glass block with the help of this diagram wherein here pqrs is showing us a glass block which is a rectangular glass slab as we can see here outside is air this is glass this is again air now a ray is coming over here from AO that is incident ray incident because it is incident as we have studied earlier this N N dash is the first normal on this glass surface this is the angle I as we can see on the screen now we're going from air to glass rarer to denser medium we have more space outside in air we'll get less space in the glass which means bending will happen towards the norm so if the bending would not have happened this ray would have gone on this dotted line but here bending will happen because mediums are changing and the angle of incidence is not really zero so ray will bend towards the normal if you can see there's a margin over here which is like it bent towards the normal this is the first angle of refraction over here r1 then it strikes further onto this surface now and at this point which is mentioned over here uh, on uh, the normal n1 n1 dash at this particular point 
Now the ray is going to further move on from glass to air, which means we are going from denser to rarer medium, wherein we have lots of space uh, because air has ample space. So it this ray should have gone this way, but now it bent towards the norm. Uh, sorry, away from the normal. Since we are getting ample of space, so we actually scatter off. You know, we're going away from the normal. This is the E angle of emergence because we've emerged out of the surface now. And if we observe the in incident ray, if would have gone without any deviation, this would have been the direction of the original ray. But this is the emergent ray. And if we see there is a perpendicular distance between these two, which will be fixed, same because these two are parallel rays. And this perpendicular distance is actually known as the term lateral displacement. Very important thing here it is, students, that what is lateral displacement? The difference between the actual incident ray direction and the emergent ray direction, which actually turns up to be two parallel rays, is actually called lateral displacement. So let's study it further. So lateral displacement, it is defined as the perpendicular distance, which is always the shortest distance between the paths of the emergent ray and the direction of the incident ray. And literal displacement depends on these three things. Number one, thickness of medium, directly proportional, which means that more thick will be the medium, more will be the literal displacement because obviously bending will happen more. Second, angle of incidence, directly proportional, which means that more angle of incidence, higher the value of angle of incidence, more will be the literal displacement. Third thing, refractive index, which is again density. So again, directly proportional, which means that more will be the value of refractive index of the self substance, uh, higher will be the value of lateral displacement. Let's further move. Now, this is it. As of now, students, uh, we wind up today's session and uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna turn up with uh, another such slide and presentation based on the B part of this particular optics chapter that is refraction of light via prism. Uh, until then, stay tuned. Please subscribe the channel. Uh, you may like it if you like up. If you have any comments, feedbacks, any kind of uh, revert back that you want to put through on this channel, please let me know on this video something else I can put forward for you so as to uh, make this session more interactive, uh, then I mean, I'll be definitely more than happy. And uh, moreover, the prime agenda of this particular video is just to ensure that uh, we don't really lag behind in terms of our syllabus and uh, we don't, you know, the education must not stop uh, un despite of the fact that, you know, we have this coronavirus threat all around so we can't really go out we don't have schools colleges going on as of now so i don't want my students to be at any loss so that's all thank you as of now uh, stay tuned and uh, stay updated i'll just uh, get back to you guys in a short while after some time uh, within a few days with this part b of our uh, particular syllabus of refraction of light vibrism that's all uh, until then thank you so much